Hello everyone, my name is Dr Claire Fitton and I'm a lecturer at the University of Glasgow specialising in anatomy. So in this video we're going to look at learning outcome 99 and that concerns the femoral canal and its relationship to the inguinal ligament and then also the clinical correlation that goes along with that which is femoral hernias. Now a few of the structures that I mentioned in this video have been introduced in more detail in the video for learning outcome 98 so it might be quite helpful for you to go back and watch that one first so that you fully understand the structures in this video. So to understand the anatomy of the femoral canal, we actually need to start with the inguinal ligament. And we can see this nicely on the model here. So we can see that the inguinal ligament is attaching laterally to the anterior superior iliac spine and medially to the pubic tubercle. And if we just remove some of those soft tissues, then we can see those connections quite nicely. And if I come from this inferior perspective, we can see that these attachments have created this space between the inguinal ligament and the pelvis. And this space is known as the retroinguinal space. And it connects the abdominal pelvic cavity to the lower limb and allows the passage of structures between the two regions. So if I pop some of those soft tissues back in, we actually split this space into two different compartments. So we've got a lateral or a muscular compartment and we've got a medial compartment. Now in this muscular compartment, we've got the muscle bellies for the iliacus muscle and the psoas major muscle, collectively known as iliopsoas. And then we've also got the femoral nerve, which is sitting just anterior to these muscle bellies. And then the medial compartment is bound by this femoral sheath. Now the femoral sheath is an extension of extraperitoneal fascia. So the posterior wall of the sheath is made up of an extension of fascia, which covers the iliac bone. And then the anterior wall is an extension of fascia from the transversalis fascia, which was first introduced in the video for learning outcome 98. Now we can see that this femoral sheath is extending down into the femoral triangle. And if you want to learn more about the femoral triangle, then you can see the video for learning outcome 145. But coming back to the femoral sheath, we actually split it further into three separate compartments. So we have a lateral compartment, which contains the femoral artery, which is highlighted there. We have a central compartment, which contains the, fem the femoral vein. And then we have a medial compartment, which is this space left here. And this is the femoral canal. So the femoral canal is conical in shape and it extends down to the superior border of the saphenous opening. So the base of the femoral canal is here, and we refer to this as the femoral ring, and it's about one centimeter in diameter. And if I just come back along here, as I said, then it extends down to the superior border, I keep wanting to say anterior, the superior border of the saphenous opening, which is where the great saphenous vein is entering to join to the femoral vein and drain into it. So if I come back to the femoral ring, so the fascia was probably shown a bit smaller in here, but we refer to this area as the femoral ring. And we say that it has four borders. So if I just come from this perspective, so this is the lateral border and the lateral border is the femoral, is the septum of fascia between the femoral canal and the femoral vein. The posterior border is the superior ramus of the pubis, which is the which is also covered by the pectineal ligament, which you can see highlighted here. Then we've got the medial border, which is the lacuna ligament, and then we've got the anterior border, which is the inguinal ligament. Now, this femoral ring would usually be closed off by a femoral septum, which is just extraperitoneal fat, which would be covered on its abdominal surface by the, um, the parietal peritoneum. Now within the femoral canal, we would have soft tissue such as um, loose connective tissue, such as fat, we would have lymphatics, and you might also have a deep inguinal node. Now the lymphatics would pierce the septum to connect the node, the deep inguinal node to the external iliac nodes. And this space is also really helpful because if the venous return from the lower limb is increased for whatever reason, then this space allows the expansion of the femoral vein. So I'm now going to talk a little bit about femoral hernia. 
Now, if you have seen the video for learning outcome 98, then you'll know that the definition of a hernia is the protrusion of an organ through the wall of the cavity that contains that organ. So that's still the abdominal cavity for a femoral hernia. So the contents of a femoral hernia are still going to be most likely small intestines or could be a bit of fat or other abdominal viscera. Now, the reason they occur is because of this femoral ring that we've spoken about is a weak point in the lower abdominal wall. And where there's a weak point, we've got increased potential for a hernia to occur. Now, if the femoral hernia enters into the femoral canal, it will be quite small in size as this is a restricted space. Remember, the base of this was only about one centimeter in diameter. However, I said earlier that the extent of the femoral canal was down to the proximal or superior border of the saphenous opening. But the fascia isn't actually attached here. The fascia of the femoral sheath, however, is attached to the inferior or distal border of the saphenous opening. So that means that the hernia cannot travel further inferior than that. So if the femoral hernia does open, does extend down into this femoral canal and it reaches the saphenous opening, it will then actually project anteriorly and then curve and travel superiorly. And then there's no limit to its size because there's nothing restraining it. Now, because this femoral ring has quite sharp borders, there is an increased risk of strangulation. In particular, this lacuna ligament. That's a very strong ligament. It's not going anywhere. So strangulation is the blood, when the blood supply to that viscera or whatever is inside the hernia, when that blood supply is cut off. So there's a higher risk of strangulation in femoral hernia than inguinal hernia. And there's also a high risk of obstruction. So that is when the food that if it's small intestine, then food that's trying to pass through, if that can't get passed, then we call that an obstructed hernia. And that's because of the sharpness and the strength of this, of this border, in particular in this lacuna ligament. Now, femoral hernia are more prevalent in women than in men. And that's because we have wider hips and therefore the femoral ring can be slightly bigger and it's also prone to widen with multiple pregnancies. However, even though prevalence is higher in women than men with femoral hernias, femoral hernias are still less prevalent in women than inguinal hernias. So if we had a scale of prevalence of hernias, then we have femoral hernias in men, femoral hernias in women, inguinal hernias in women and inguinal hernias in men. So hopefully that makes sense. Now, coming back to the clinical presentation of a femoral hernia, you will have a visible protrusion, particularly if it reaches this point here, if it um, extends anteriorly and out of the saphenous opening. Now, I said with an inguinal hernia, we use the pubic tubercle as a reference point and the protrusion was superior and medial in an inguinal hernia. But with a femoral hernia, the protrusion will be lateral and inferior, and it will definitely be inferior to the inguinal ligament. So that is something that the clinician can look out for to see a difference between the two of what type of hernia they are looking at. Another difference between the two types of hernia is that in an inguinal hernia, if the individual was to cough or have an increase in abdominal pressure, the visible protrusion would most likely increase in size, whereas in a femoral hernia, that wouldn't occur. Finally, just like inguinal hernias, femoral hernias can only be fixed surgically, so the bits of intestines or whatever is in there would be placed back into the abdominal cavity, and then a surgical mesh would be placed over this femoral ring to reinforce the area and to stop the hernia reoccurring. Now, I think that brings us to the end of this video. So thank you for watching.